Long ago, a group of English colonists bravely left their homes and traveled to a new world. They settled on the island of Roanoke, and while they were there, a small girl child was born, and she was named Virginia in honor of Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen. Concerned for the well-being of the new colony and his new granddaughter Virginia, the governor traveled back to England for supplies. Once there, he found himself trapped by a war that broke out between England and Spain. And it wasn't until three years later, when the war was over, that he was finally able to board a ship and rush back to the colony he'd left behind. He arrived on Roanoke Island on August 18, 1590, his granddaughter's third birthday, but he found the settlement deserted, plundered, empty. It was surrounded by a palisade of great trees as if it was a fort, and carved into one of the palisades was a single word, Croatoan, carved into a nearby tree were the letters C-R-O. The governor hoped this meant that the colony and his family had taken shelter with his friend, Chief Mantio, on what would become Hatteras Island. But as he was preparing to follow the colonists, a great hurricane arose and its fierce winds damaged his ships. The storm forced him to return to England and he was never able to fund another trip to America. He died without knowing what had happened to his family. Indeed, no one ever found out what happened to the lost colony. It remains a mystery to this day. But the whispers of American legend tell a further story about these colonists. Not the story of a people slaughtered or lost, but the story of a people displaced by the hostility of one native tribe and taken in by a neighboring tribe on the far side of the island, welcomed with open arms. And it is the story of a little girl with bright blue eyes and long flowing hair who was beloved by all who met her. Virginia Dare grew wise in the ways of the forest, strong in her understanding of man and beast. With each passing year, she grew more comely and desirable until all the eligible warriors of the tribe fell deeply in love with her. The young chief Okisko was the bravest and most handsome of them all, and it was his suit that found favor with the lovely Virginia Dare and her doting parents. But a dark wizard, the medicine man Chico, desired the girl for himself. As she was walking along the beach one day, he summoned his dark arts, calling upon the spirits to cast a spell on Virginia Dare. In a moment, she was transformed into a shining white deer. With a bleat of fear and confusion, the white deer fled into the trees before the dark wizard could catch her. When Virginia didn't return home from her walk, the settlers and tribesmen alike searched the entire island for the beloved girl. When they couldn't find her, they returned home, presuming that she had drowned in the sea. See, none of them associated her disappearance with the appearance of a white deer that sometimes appeared walking along the sound at dusk. Only the young chief Okisko held on to the belief that she might still be alive. He spent many days grieving in prayer and fasting, seeking knowledge from the spirit world. And on the afternoon of the third day, a brown pelican came to him on the winds of the sea. It told him that Virginia had been transformed by the medicine man Chico, and that the only way to save her was to pierce her heart with an arrow tipped by an oyster shell. Okisko was overjoyed at the news and thanked the proud spirit of the brown pelican. He immediately found an oyster shell and began to fashion it into an arrowhead. However, the dark wizard Chico hadn't finished his scheming. If he couldn't have the girl, no one would. He sought out a well-known warrior named Juan Kees, who hated the English. Most of all, he hated Virginia Dare. Oh, he had loved her once, like all the other warriors, but she had rejected his advances. Indeed, Chico told Juan Kees that he had transformed Virginia into the white deer because he knew that Juan Kees would seek her out and kill her. Many, many years earlier, Juan Kees had traveled to England, and from that journey he had some coins in his possession made of silver, a metal that can kill creatures created by dark magic. So he took the coins and he melted them down over a blazing fire and crafted a deadly arrowhead of pure silver. Hearing of the dark wizard's plans, the brown pelican flew across the waves to Okisko, who had just finished with the oyster-tipped arrow that would return Virginia Dare to her human form. 
Hurry, the brown pelican called. You must hurry. Another seeks the white deer and would take her life. Okisko gasped in horror and ran across the island as fast as his strong body would carry him to the place where the white deer had been seen walking along the sound. As he reached the place where the abandoned settlement once stood, he saw the white deer standing by the shore. He took aim at once, the oyster shell gleaming at the tip of his arrow, and he shot the white deer in the heart. At the same moment, a silver-tipped arrow flew through the air from the other side of the clearing. It too hit its mark, striking the white deer in the head. The white deer gave a cry like that of a woman in pain. Its form shimmered glowing so brightly that it momentarily blinded the eyes of the two warriors who had shot her. And when the light died away, they saw, lying where the white deer had stood, the dying figure of the beautiful Virginia Dare. Okisko gave a wail of anguish and ran to her side. Behind him, one Kis laughed, an evil sound, and disappeared into the bracken, never to be seen again. Virginia Dare died in her beloved's arms and was buried there in the old fort where her people had first settled. Okisko went on to become a great chief among his people, but never married. His people whispered that the source of his success was his spirit guide, a white deer who had sometimes appeared to him at dusk down by the shores of the Sound. To this day, whenever a white deer appears along the shores of the Outer Banks, it is said that the spirit of Virginia Dare has returned to watch over the land she once loved.